When the shell is unwrapped and ready to bake, we need to prep it for the oven. If the shell was baked as is, we'd inevitably get a domed center on the bottom and the sides of the dough would begin to slump. That would be much less space for filling. So we use pie weights to, surprise, weigh down the dough. Now you can find ceramic pie weights or metal pie weights. Here's examples of both of those at most kitchen supply stores. But you can also use that jar of pennies that you don't know what to do with. But don't use the old standard of dried beans or rice. Neither of those do a great job of evenly conducting heat, which will need to set the dough under the foil. Which brings me to my next point. Before I put the weights into the dough, nearly to the top, I need to line it with a double layer of aluminum foil. There we go. Now the foil will not only keep the yucky weights or pennies from touching the actual dough itself, but with a generous overhang, it will help to prevent the edge of the crust from browning too quickly. Now if you bake a lot of pies, which you'll want to after this lesson, you can also keep the weights or pennies in a large oven roasting bag to make it easier to transfer in and out of the pie shell. And that would be just for this purpose. So, put it right in there. And now it's time to bake the shell. And we'll start it in a 375 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And that will give the shell time to set up and just begin to color slightly. Now it's time to remove the foil and weights. Now this underneath, the foil cools down rather quickly, is a partially baked pie shell. And this is perfect for pecan or pumpkin pie. We'd fill this right away and then return the pie to the oven to finish baking. Now for a fully baked shell, we'd put it right back in the oven as is, but without the foil and weights, and bake it another 10 to 12 minutes. After a thorough cool down, the shell is then ready to be filled.